I wish you were here, Brandy. And that was difficult to sing, very difficult. But we wanted to sing it, we wanted to do it. I lost everything, you. Hello, what's the crack, what's the story? Welcome back to the channel. This is part seven of the Bee Gees documentary, Let's Go. The brothers were busily creating hits for other artists, but their own recordings were not as successful. Oh God. Neither 1981's Living Eyes album, nor Stayin' Alive, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, produced a top 10 single. What? I mean, there were very turbulent times. That's crazy. 1980 was a pretty, pretty much a landmark year because that's when our, my marriage to my first wife ended. Oh. And of course it was that hard Lulu? because the children I have that from that. Think so. Marriage, very young at the time, and I was always having to be away. I was, I was working. I would prefer them to have been with me, but of course they were going to school in England, and uh, and it, it's it was all, it was a very messy period. After separating from Molly, Robin oh. met artist Dwina Murphy. Oh, sorry. There I'm was an sorry. instant connection. We decided when we first met each other, we just knew that we were going to have a child together. Yeah. I Dwina. already had two great kids, Spencer and Melissa. And I thought one more would, would round it off, you know. She just seemed the right person to, to want to have another child with. He has a lovely kind of poetic way about him. Come again, can you use a talent? <laughs> and he's very quiet about his talents and things. He has a little keyboard. And sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and I'll hear this beautiful sort of little chords playing and, and then this lovely voice <laughs> singing. It's like being awakened by angels or something. After three years of hit making, Andy Gibb fell victim to the same pressures and temptations of first fame that had overwhelmed his brothers. I, I talked to him outside on the balcony, uh, saying, you know, this is really a nice house, Andy. There's a nice car out there, that Porsche, really nice. You're not going to keep all this, you know. He said, what do you mean? I said, you do what you're doing, this stuff will vanish. All this oh. stuff will go. Your career will go out the window, everything. And he says, I know, I know. I've got, I know what I have to do. But Andy couldn't be helped. Neither at this point in time could Morris, who was still not dealing with his drinking problem. He did, however, find joy in fatherhood. He's always been real good with the kids. Even, even when he drank, he was still, he was there for the birth of both of them. I'm sorry, I just, I feel like I like the fact that they, they're so open. They're not living any stone unturned. I like that. It's such an open documentary. Oh, wow. Kudos to them, kudos. It's a miracle that no one can really ever get over when you see this, when you, when you see your own flesh and blood you know, mm. coming to life. And then you give it that first squeeze of life and he starts wriggling and crying mm. and wow, and I washed mm. him down and he's my little boy. Oh, now he's 24 bless. and he <laughs> He's a very good father, mm. Morris. He's got two nice kids, two, mm. they're all grown up now, of course. They all put their families first before anything. If I didn't have children, I don't think I'd be the whole, the total person I am now. Mm. The most wonderful thing about having children is that you get to go on being a child. You get to uh, grow up again. Mm. You get to live your childhood again through theirs. Wow, that's so family true. Family has always been at the heart of the Bee Gees story. And over the years, that family has continued to grow. Barry has five children. Robin has three. And Morris has two. In 1986, following a series of solo projects, the brothers came to the realization that the industry was more interested in them as the Bee Gees than as individuals. Ooh. After a five-year break, they decided to come back together as a group. Ooh. Uh, with me, and again. It's ridiculous. I've reacted to 
literally over 30 bg songs so i know so many songs now it just comes to me like that it's just it's just natural you know these guys are legends and I'm, I'm sorry but i love them <laughs> In 1987, You Win Again was an enormous international hit, reaching number one in England, making them the first group ever to top the British charts in three straight decades. Three decades! The Bee Gees had successfully launched their third major comeback. But this achievement was not one they could cherish. On March 10, 1988, only days after his 30th birthday, Andy Gibb, the Bee Gees' little brother, died from heart disease. Whoa, maybe I don't want to know the reason why. 30. Lately you don't talk to me. So sad. Falling, I can't see. I had a dream once that he, he would die, and it scared the hell out of me. And I remember the morning when I got the news. Um, it will always burn in my brain and in my heart. He was a great kid. Whoa. I think it was hard on all of them and their wives. They all took it very hard. Every one of us, all of us, we all took it very hard. To me, it, it was just shocking that he, uh, a guy so young had to leave so early. Yeah. 30. If once you lose someone of your own blood, I think it changes you radically. I think, I think the spiritual lesson and the soul growth, I think, is the term. Whatever they say, whatever, whatever the term is, I think, I think you, you grow deeply inside and you never really forget. The loneliest feeling I felt was when his coffin was left outside the the thing, uh, the wall, where they put the, the coffins inside the wall. <clears throat> and we were driving away, and I looked at the wall, and I just saw it. There was no one else there, just his coffin lying there against Whoa. the wall. And I felt like he'd been abandoned. <sighs> and we all wanted to go back and just stay with him, because he was by himself, with these strangers in green coats that are coming up, and it was so eerie. Well, it makes you treasure everybody more. It's, um, it's a kind of reminder of your mortality, isn't it? So if there's anything to be learned, is that nothing lasts at all. The week after, we thought, maybe if we go back oh. to work, we can, uh, you know, get recentered or something. And I had to... I was playing the strings, and it was very beautiful. Barry and Robin just started crying, and I just started crying. I said, I can't play anymore. We went home. And about a month later, we came back in, and then we did uh, Wish You Were Here, Brandy. And that was difficult to sing, very difficult. But we wanted to sing it, we wanted to do it. I lost everything in losing you. This is just remarkably weird. It's just absolutely crazy. Because just imagine Andy watching them grow up. I feel like he wanted to be just like them. Do you know what I mean? What senior brothers do so much. And then them looking at him growing up as well. And then just losing him like that. I just, I can't fathom it. I just can't, you know, you know, it's just crazy when you think of it. Someone you love so much, your brother, you know, just mad. Must have been a tough time. You know, just being able to go on is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So sad. So, so sad. Wow. It's part seven finished already. Wow. Again. That was just remarkable. I feel like that's probably, probably the saddest part of, we've done so far. It has to be. Because like everything we did, you know, then it was roller coaster. It was about them coming back, uh, being the first band in like to have, you know, three, to have a 
number one in three decades in a row, something like that, in England. And then Erba Andy dying of heart disease at only 30. That's just really sad. Oh yeah, I feel like it's good to actually get to know the artists you know you're listening to because you know you get to understand where the music is coming from. Uh, to be fair, I never used to do this. I never used to. Do it. I'm so glad I, just, I started doing this, and now I'm gonna start doing it for a lot of artists I'm reacting to. I'm gonna do it for Queen as well. Uh, Queen, maybe Prince, uh, the Beatles. You know, get to know them more, and then you get to understand the music more. Yeah, let me know if there's any other any other bands you want to check out or any other songs from this lot. And I'll definitely check it out. But yeah, thank you so much. I'm really enjoying this. Keep liking, commenting. I love your comments. Your comment is the best. You guys give me so much input to all this. Thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.